Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is structures with reinforced aluminium sections in our section one and RFM six. My name is Andreas Sörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Bluebuy Software. For instance, technical content of the website, German and English webinars, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today and I will answer your questions during the webinar. My colleague Sonja von Bloh will be the presenter. She's responsible for product engineering and customer support. Yeah, and she's the main responsible person for the add-on aluminium design and also for our section. Okay. Then I say something how you can ask questions. At first, I switch off my webcam that you can see the full screen. You can press that button with the question mark. And then you can enter your question here, press send, and I will receive your question and I will answer you. Okay, that's all from my side. I hand over to Sonja. Sonja, it's your turn. Thank you, Andreas, for the introductory words. I would also like to welcome you to today's webinar. The topic of this webinar is the modeling of structures with reinforced aluminum cross sections. The reinforcement can be made of steel or aluminum. There are several options for creating these reinforcements. The aluminum cross section, including reinforcement, can be created as one cross section in our section. Another option is to model two separate members in RFM or RSTAB with the respective aluminum or steel cross section. I will first show the modeling of the aluminum cross section, including reinforcement in our section. And um, afterwards, I create the structure in RFM. In the process, I will also explain how to change our section cross sections from RFM. I then model the structure with two separate members using line releases in RFM. I will then show an alternative modeling of the two separate members using nodal releases in RFM. This option is also available in Airstab, while line releases are not available in Airstab. Finally, I will talk about new useful um, features. This uh, brings me to the first point, the modeling of the aluminum cross section, including reinforcements in our section. The cross-section geometry is available in DXF format so that I can use the import function. The creation of cross-sections based on DXF files was the subject of a previous or section webinar. You can find this webinar on our website or on YouTube. There's also a knowledge base article on this topic on our website. I start the import uh, process via file import DXF. Then I choose the corresponding DXF file and click on open. In the import dialog, I select the option create DXF template for further editing. And then I click on OK. Now the lines of the DXF files will be created in our section. I first create the part using um, the function select boundary. Here I have to define uh, the material. I want to use um, this material that's already chosen here in this uh, box. Then I click on OK and then I click on the corresponding line. The part is now created. Now I have to create um, the uh, opening. For this, I select also the function that's available for um, openings to uh, select boundary. And then I click on the corresponding line. I then deactivate the display of the parts and openings um, to get a better overview. 
I uh, then create the elements necessary for the classification and calculation of the effective cross-section. To do this, I only model a quarter of the cross-section and I then create the other parts by mirroring. To do this, I use the set centerlines function. I find uh, this function here uh, in this uh, part. All I have to do is uh, click on the two parallel lines. The center line is then generated automatically. First, I create the center lines uh, for the flange, then for the arc, and then for the web. The center lines then need to be extended. For this, I use the function extends graphically. Clicking on the left side of the line to be extended extends the line to the left, otherwise to the right until it intersects with the uh, next line. I will extend here this line to the left and I want also extend the center line of the web on both uh, sides. Since I only want to model a quarter of the cross section, I trim the center lines accordingly. To do this, I use a function that I find uh, here um, that's called uh, to location. This function makes it possible to extend or shorten a line to a specific location. I trim the center lines of the flange and the web to the center of the cross section. To do this, I select these two lines and then I click on OK. I then have to specify the side of the line to be modified. The direction of the lines is shown on the working area. I have to shorten the end of the line, so I choose um, this in this uh, list box. Uh, then um, I have to define the location in this part here. I choose the zero point here and then I click on OK. Then the center line of the arc has to be connected to that of the web. And I make this connection with a straight line. For this I create here a new line and I connect it here. I don't need um, this line here, so I uh, delete it. Now this line is not divided at this point, but this is necessary that it's divided because um, elements are only connected if they share the same node. For this reason, I divide um, this line in uh, this location. To do this, I use the function uh, connect lines and elements. And I draw a window about this part. And now the line is uh, divided in this point. I can now create the elements using the create elements online function. I find this function here, create elements online. All I have to do um, is to select the corresponding lines. I select all the center lines I click on OK and then I have to define uh, the thickness of the elements and here I define uh, 5 millimeters. 
now the elements uh, are created. I now select all elements here in Navigator Data because I want to uh, mirror them. For this, I choose here this function mirror. I want to create a copy, so I activate uh, this option. Then I have to define the mirroring axis. It's the axis Z and the point, it's the zero point. And I click on OK. Now the right part um, is created and I need here the part on the bottom. So I select all of my elements and I open the dialog mirror uh, copy again and I change here uh, the mirroring axis um, to axis Y. And then I click on OK. I uh, then create the reinforcement. This consists of a welded rectangular cross-section made of S235 steel. I import this cross-section from the R-section cross-section library. To do this, I go to Navigator Data and choose here New Section. Then I open the section library and choose the rectangular hollow section. This should be a welded rectangular hollow section, so I choose here the manufacturing type welded. I have also to create a new material. I want to use a steel S235 for this cross section, so I create a new material, open the material library and choose here as 235 from this standard. Click on OK. OK, and then I have to define the um, geometry of this uh, cross section. Height is here 200 and 30 millimeter and the width is 100 millimeter and the th thickness is 5 millimeter. In the top section location rotation mirroring I select here the zero point as the insertion point and I click on OK. Only cross sections that are rigidly connected to each other uh, can be imported into RFM6 or RSTAP9. This connection is applied over the entire length of the member. If the cross sections are not connected to each other, the modeling presented here is not suitable. Two members would then have to be created in RFM or RSTAP. As I mentioned at the beginning, I will also sh show this today. In order to connect the two cross sections, I have to explode the cross section into its individual objects. To do this, I choose here this cross section and choose here this function explode. I create the connection between the two cross section using an element with a zero thickness. To do this, I open here this function new element, define a thickness of zero millimeter, and I have to define also an effective thickness for shear transfer, and this will be five millimeters. Then I create the two elements. Uh, 
in the base data, I open it here, I set the thin walled analysis method. This is necessary because the connection of the two cross sections was made using elements with uh, zero thickness. These cannot be taken into account with a finite element analysis. The connection of the two cross sections would have had uh, to be made uh, using parts. It's advisable to start the calculation once in order to find possible modeling errors. Here, no errors um, will be found, so um, I save now uh, this cross-section. I name it here, we enforced ALU section. Then I can close this uh, cross section. Mm. The I now can model the structure in RFM. So I open RFM. Here I have already created a new file and I have to import first the aluminum cross section with uh, the, reinforce the reinforcement that I've just created. To do this, I go to navigate data, choose here new section, open the section library from our section, and I choose here the reinforced um, aluminum section. Uh, I still need this cross section without uh, reinforcements. And for this, I want to show you a new function in RFM or RSTAB. In RFM or RSTAB, it's now possible uh, to open this uh, cross section in our section and uh, to modify this cross section in our section and to import it again in RFM or in uh, Erstab. To do this, I copy this cross section and then I open this cross section in our section. In our section, I then delete the steel cross section and the connection between the steel cross section and the aluminum cross section. Then I start the calculation again to see if there are any errors. There are no errors. So I can save um, this uh, cross section. I want to save this cross section also on um, my disk. So I choose here File, Save As, and I change the name to ALU section, and then I save this uh, section on my disk. Then I uh, save this section, I go to save and return to RFRAM. And by clicking save and back, I also apply this change uh, in RFRAM. You can see now um, this uh, cross section is without this reinforcement, and this cross section includes uh, this reinforcement. If I had just clicked save and back, only the cross section would have 
been changed in AFM, but the original status of the cross section would have been left on the hard drive. Then I click here on OK. I then model the column with the unreinforced aluminum cross section. I choose here new member, choose the aluminum cross section, and then I define the column with the height of uh, six milli six meter, and um, I model the beam with a length of eight meter. The roof pitch is 18 degree, so I use the function camphor. I find this functions in um, function in uh, menu edit, manipulation, camphor. Here I have um, to define the angle, the rotation angle of 18 degree, and I have to define the rotation axis. This is the axis Y, and the rotation direction, and this is the direction Z. Then I choose the frame corner as the rotation point. Now the beam is rotated by 18 degree. The frame corner is reinforced with a steel over length of half a meter. I therefore divide the column with this function um, by distance. And here I define a length of uh, 0 0.5 meter. Apply this and I have to do this also for the beam. But here on member start. Now the column and the beam are divided into uh, two parts. Um, I then define uh, hinged supports at the beginning of the column and the ridge. To do this, I assign a nodal support here. on the column and on the ridge. Since I want to show different modeling options today, I copy the frame uh, twice. I use here the move copy function and activate the create copy number of copies is two and the displacement vector is uh, 10, me 10 meter. First, I will show the modeling of the reinforced frame corner with the aluminum cross section and reinforcement that I just created in our section. To do this, I only have to change the cross section on the frame corner. I choose here the two members, choose edit, and then I choose here the reinforced aluminum section. Then I uh, have to define uh, the load. I want to, I do not want to consider uh, the self weight, so I deactivate the self weight in this load case. And then I create 
the member load. Here a load direction global and z on projected length with a load magnitude of 2.6 kN per meter. And I define it on these two members. The disadvantage of this modeling is that it's not possible to design cross sections with uh, different materials in add-on aluminum design or steel design. However, the stresses can be determined in the add-on stress drain analysis. In addition, I cannot define the coupling conditions between the aluminum and steel cross sections. So with this type of modeling, I cannot define that the aluminum cross section is only slide over the steel reinforcement and thus the steel cross section only supports bending. The axial force here acts at the entire cross section. If I here start the calculation, I will see this uh, in the internal forces. However, both mentioned disadvantages uh, can be avoided by modeling two members. First, I would like to show you an option that is only available on AirFem. This is the modeling using line releases. A line release allows the model to be decoupled along a line. I would like to show you the principle in my presentation for this. I go to my presentation, uh, shown as member one on line one, which is defined by nodes one and two. First, I have to select the line on which the line release is to be defined. Furthermore, the properties of the line release must be defined this definition is made in the line release type. The property of the line release are described by a hinge. The line releases uh, create nodes three and four, as well as line two, which is defined via these nodes. The generated released objects are output in the re release generation part here. The lines are coupled along their length using the hinge condition defined in the line release type. This is indicated by the coupling um, bars uh, shown on the graphic. The position of the line hinge can be defined in the section release generation two. Um, it can be defined on the original line or on, or on the released line. This is defined here on, on the original line. In this example, this is the line one. The released line is automatically created with the corresponding nodes as a copy. However, if you want to use one or more existing nodes for the generated line, you can specify the corresponding node numbers in the section definition objects. This affects the results because the displacements at these nodes are not released. So for this, if, so for example, if you define nodes one and two, is here on this example as definition nodes. The released line is defined using the original nodes one and two. I can now define the member uh, on line two and then specify it as a released object. This is 
this member number two. I would now like to show you the modeling in Airfilm. For this, I go back to Airfilm. First, I create a new line release. I go to Navigator Data and I find the line releases under Special Objects, Line Releases. Here I create a new line release. Um, I then select the corresponding lines. These are the lines 7 and 6. After that, I create a new line release type. The displacement in the X direction should be released here. I click here on OK. And this line release uh, creates the line 13 and 14 on the release nodes 16 till 18. On lines 13 and 14, I open it here on the navigator data. I now define the reinforcement cross sections. To do this, I choose the two lines, click on edit, and I apply a member on uh, these lines. And I choose here, or I have to uh, create here a new uh, cross section. Um, and this should be uh, the welded uh, rectangular hollow section. To do this, I open the section library, choose here rectangular hollow section. This section should be welded, so I choose the manufacturing type welded and the material S235. Now I have to define the geometry. The height is 230 millimeter and the width is 100 millimeter and the thickness is 5 millimeter. Then I click here on OK. And now the member um, is applied on this uh, line. To ensure that the aluminum cross sections are all connected to one another, they must be defined using the original nodes. The steel cross sections must be defined using the released nodes. I control this using visibilities. For this, I go to the navigator views and first I will show here the um, steel cross sections These are defined using the release nodes and the release nodes have here a blue color. If I move the mouse over the node, a reference to the associated line release is also displayed. You can see it here. Then I only show the aluminum section and 
the aluminum section are only defined using the original nodes and the original nodes have a red color. Since the aluminum cross sections are only slide over the steel reinforcements, I still have to define movement hinges on the aluminum cross sections in the frame corner here. For comparison purposes with the other structure, I will not show this today. I then define the member load of 2.6 uh, kilonewton per meter on uh, the aluminum beams. To do this, I choose here the new member load and define it on these um, beams. Then I start the calculation. I first look at the axial forces and the axial force is applied only on the aluminum cross section. If I show here the steel cross section, I see that no axial force is applied here. This is because um, we have defined the line release uh, with the release in uh, x direction. Then I show the bending moments here on uh, all cross sections and then I see here the bending moments um, are applied to both uh, members um, via its uh, stiffnesses. The bending moments are applied on the on the steel cross section and on the aluminum uh, cross section. As already mentioned, line releases are only available in AirFam. However, modeling with two separate members is also possible in Airstab. Noodle releases are available for this in Airstab. You can also use noodle releases in AirFilm. I would like to show you the principle in my presentation. Shown is member one which is defined by a nodes 1 and 2. First, I have to select the nodes at which the release is to be defined. Furthermore, the properties of the nodal release must be uh, defined. This definition is made in the nodal release type. The properties of the releases are described by a hinge. The position of the hinge uh, can be defined in the section uh, release generation on the original node or on the released node. I also have to specify the released uh, objects. This is in the member uh, number one in this case. The nodal release uh, creates the release nodes three and four. The generated released objects are output in the section release generated here. The nodes are coupled via the hinge conditions defined in the nodal release types. You can see it here. Member one is now defined between the released nodes three and four. Member two can now be defined between nodes one and two. It should be noted that in contrast to line releases, the two members are only connected to each other at nodes one and three, here at this part, and at nodes three and four, but not over the length uh, of the member. If the coupling conditions are to be, 
to be applied along the length of the member. In the solution with nodal releases, uh, the new, the two members would have to be divided at the small intervals and nodal releases defined at the intermediate nodes. I would now like to show you the modeling in RFM. For this, I open RFM again. First, I have to create the new nodal release. I go here to the navigator data and I find the nodal releases here uh, under special objects and I create here a new uh, nodal release. Then I select the corresponding nodes. These are the nodes 14, 12 and 15. The node release type should be defined separately for each node because the reference axes are different. So I activate here this checkbox uh, define node release type for each node separately. Then I go to the tab node release type and here I have to create a new node release type for this node 12. And here, once again, the displacement in X direction should be released. Then I have to define the local access system and I choose here the local access system from this member. This release uh, should be also used for node number 15. And for node number 14, I have to create a new node release type. Release is also in X direction, but the member is here, the member number nine. Then I have to define the released objects. And these are the objects 11 and 10. The generated release nodes are uh, 19 till 21. Then I click on OK. The released aluminum members are now defined via the released nodes and no longer via the original nodes. In order for the aluminum cross-section to be connected to one another, they must all be defined via the original nodes. Therefore, I now change the cross-section of the released members choose here edit to the steel cross section. I then define the aluminum cross sections between the original nodes. To do this, I open here the new member choose here the aluminum cross section and then I choose here the original nodes for the definition. I check this again using the visibility. For this, I open the navigator views and 
activate the visibility for the steel cross sections. The steel cross sections are defined via the release nodes. Release nodes are colored in blue. I can see it here. And if I move with the mouse over the node, I see um, this is a node created via a nodal release. Then I show the aluminum cross sections only, and the aluminum cross sections are defined via the original nodes. The original nodes have a red color. I can see it here if I move it, move the mouse over the node. Since the aluminum cross section are only slide over the steel reinforcement, I still have to define movement hinges on the aluminum cross sections in the frame corner. As I mentioned before, for comparison purposes with the other structure, I will not show this today. I then define the member load on the beam, on the aluminum beam, with the same load magnitude. And then I start the calculation. I first look at the axial force due to the hinge uh, defined in the line release in x direction. The axial force is only transferred via the aluminum cross section. You can see it here. If I show the steel cross section, no axial force is applied here. The steel cross section also contributes to bending. I will show you this also. If I show here the bending moments and why, I show it on the whole cross section, and you see that um, both members have a bending moment. This brings me to the last point of today's webinar, the new features. You can now also read results such as the member sec from the dimension. To do this, a linear dimension must be defined on the member. I now define a linear dimension on the beam. And to see here also the results, I have to go to the navigator results and I have to activate under dimension the results on member. If I want to see the deformation, I activate here the global deformation and I see now the result here on the dimension related uh, to um, the deformed system. A member sec corresponds to the largest dimension of an imaginary line between the deflected beginning and end of the member section. The supports are very stiff, so the member sec differs only slightly here. The member sec is 20 4.1 millimeter in comparison to the global deformation of 24.2 millimeter. Um, 
if I define a dimension between the end of the reinforcement and the end of the beam, the difference will be clearly visible. I do it here. I choose here the two nodes. And you can see here the sec deformation is now 22.5 millimeter in comparison to 24.2 millimeter uh, for this section here. Another new function allows you to examine the stresses within members using clipping planes. Clipping planes are cutting planes that you can freely place through the model. The area in front or behind this plane is shown transparently in the view. The predefined clipping planes can be used for this. And you find these uh, predefined clipping planes in the navigator data. Here under guide objects. clipping planes, and we have here um, three uh, predefined clipping planes. However, it's also possible to define user-defined clipping planes. I want to activate the clipping plane, so I choose here clipping plane on. And I want to examine uh, the normal stresses here in the member. Therefore, I choose here the display of the stresses. I can then move the clipping layer to the desired location with a mouse via these I can see now the stresses here in the cross section and here in the cross section of the unreinforced part this brings me to the end of the webinar. I will now hand the floor back to Andreas. Thank you, Sonia, for your presentation. An additional hint from my side, you can book your free online appointment, such as a product demonstration of our add-ons or main programs. You can click on that link in the PowerPoint or you can scan the QR code uh, and then you will, or you can contact the sales team. You can download the PowerPoint slide from the webinar page. In the next days, you will get an email when the recording is online with a link to the webinar page and you will also get your attendee certificate. And on the webinar page is also the PowerPoint slide, model, yeah, and the recording. Okay, that should be also all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to Sonia for the nice presentation. I wish all a nice rest of the day and say bye-bye.